Hello, my name is Guillaume Favre from Lausanne University Hospital in Switzerland. I will present to you the Conception Work Package 2.5.2, Building a Pregnancy Pharmacovigilance Model for the Future. Can pregnancy data collected by conception partners be analyzed using common standards developed by the Conception Project? But first, what is a pharmacovigilance and how does it work? Pharmacovigilance is the system, when a drug is available, that studies drug safety by several processes. Nowadays, the pharmacovigilance context is composed of both public and private sector. Administrations, academic institutions, as well as private pharmaceutical firms have their own drug safety systems and deliver reports frequently to build the scientific evidence. But in pregnancy, there is only little evidence-based information available on drug safety, mostly because pregnant women were excluded from clinical trials. There is an urgent need to change how drug use is studied and reported in pregnancy. The Conception Project aims to build that model for the future. In our project 2.5.2, we are wondering if we can gather and analyze data collected from Conception partners. Every partners are illustrated here as groups of scientists. They all have their own way to perform pharmacovigilance and they have their own results. Here, the three groups of scientists are studying pharmacovigilance in different way and have different pharmacovigilance reports. All relevant, but different. That's why we need to have a line definition and methodology. But what is so different between groups? Like the seven differences game, in each picture, the man is seated in a boat and is fishing. All groups of scientists are studying pharmacovigilance, but we need to find the seven differences between group A and group B. In practice, group A could have collected maternal age at exposure, whereas group B collected maternal date of birth. Group A used the diagnosis code called MEDRA, whereas group B used the one called ICD-10. And it is the same in the interpretation of data, as the trimester of pregnancy definition or the stillbirth definition. The American College of Obstetrician and Gynecologist, the ACOG, uses a limit of 20 weeks, whereas the Royal College of Obstetrician and Gynecologist in the UK uses 23 weeks. We need to have same definitions. We call this the core data elements. To perform this project, we will have the same map, called the core data elements, and the same route, which is an aligned methodology. And using this common map and route, we will perform a demonstration study on data regarding multiple sclerosis treatment in pregnancy. Why multiple sclerosis treatment? Because it is a perfect example for this work. Multiple sclerosis is a central nervous system disease that damages the brain and the spinal cord, affecting young women with the great majority diagnosed before 35 years old. And one third of these diagnosed women will be pregnant. Here is our user manual. We're gonna see what are these different groups that collect data, who are the patients we will include in our analysis, what are the drugs of interest, then we will have a look to our map, the CDE for core data elements. From that CDE, we will focus on important definitions and eventually we will have a look to our route, the data management and data analysis. Here are the collaborators of our project. The pregnancy registries, composed of Novartis, Sanofi firms and Lareb, which is a public pregnancy registry in Netherlands. The enhanced pharmacovigilance programs called PRIM, for Pregnancy Outcomes Intensive Monitoring, which are enhanced pregnancy registries from Novartis and Merck. And the ENTIS centers. ENTIS is a European network of teratogen information service. Basically, these are institutions, patients and healthcare providers can call to have an assessment of the drug used or to report a drug use during pregnancy. We will have four centers, one from UK, two from Israel and one from Switzerland. All pregnant women exposed to the drug of interest during pregnancy or before will be included. The period before will depend on each drug we'll see next. However, 
If a pregnant patient is exposed in the same time to a teratogenic or fetotoxic drug, she will be excluded to avoid an incorrect association. If a pregnant woman takes in the same time the drug we study and the drug we know that induces a birth defect, we will never know which drug is at the origin of this birth defect. We study loads of multiple sclerosis drugs. Here is the list. The variables to collect are described in our map, the correct elements, in which every items and strict definitions are reported for cohesion between all partners. This is an example of the core data elements. If we take the maternal age, the definition is the mother's age in years on the first day of the last menstrual period prior to pregnancy and the correct format is an integer number. The black dots mean it is essential data. This information can be directly reported or derived from the maternal date of birth and the date of last menstrual period. If we take the details of congenital anomalies, the definition is details of the anomaly present in the exposed fetus and we will ask a free text for detailing the anomaly, the diagnosis code, MEDRA or ICD-10, and the age at diagnosis. A very important definition is the exposure period of interest. After a drug intake, even if you stop taking that drug, the molecule may still be active in the body and that time will define the period called peri-LMP period for Peri last menstrual period before pregnancy, in which we will consider that the pregnant patient has been exposed to the drug in the period at risk. We will also report the trimester of exposure during pregnancy. Trimester 1 from date of LMP to 90 days after, trimester 2 from 91 days to 188 days after LMP, and trimester 3 from 189 days to the end of pregnancy according to the Royal College of Obstetrician and Gynecologist definition. With these multiple sclerosis treatment data, all partners will assess their own data with the CDE and create standard datasets based on the CDE. In the first report, each group will assess their items to the CDE items. For instance, the date of birth is a CDE item and defined at the date at the end of the pregnancy. The partner will collect the variable that fits, which is here the gestational age at the end of pregnancy, defined as weeks and days of gestation at the end of pregnancy. It is not the same variable, but a simple calculation from the last menstrual period with weeks and days fits perfectly to the CDE. We will do the same for every item for, of the CDE. Second report. Each item of the CDE will compare to every other groups to assess the difference of items between every partners. Third report, by using the standard data set created in MIRROR to the CDE, each group will deliver standardized results tables. For instance, here we will record the number of pregnancy reported, every characteristic of patients, and the number of birth defects in absolute number and proportion. In the final report, we will compare the different standardized results of each group and assess the difference in between. Final version of populated tables will be discussed regarding informal comparison between the analysis of datasets provided by each group. We will assess the feasibility of analyzing dispersed dataset using this approach. But what is the perspective for the future? it is to be able to perform what we call a meta-analysis. That means that we analyze all standardized data we collected to perform a big analysis with data from different origins. And the more data we have, as long as it is standardized, the more precise is the result.